everyone, it's Janet Wakeland with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, we are going to make this sweet little idea that can be so many things that I will give you some inspiration for later in the video. What it is, is it's a small little box on a self-standing easel so that you can fill it with all kinds of wonderful treats. So what you're going to want to do, if you would like to follow along with this video, some of the things that you would like to have handy to help you out is you're going to want to have a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. You're going to want to have an 8.5 by 11 coordinating piece of cardstock. You're going to want to have a 6 by 6 piece of designer series paper. Let me move that off to the side. Tear and tape um, or our red line adhesive will work great a pair of snips, a bone folder. I like to use my paper piercing tool just to get the backing off of the tear and tape. And then the last thing that you're going to want is a paper trimmer. So if you have all of those tools assembled, then we're gonna go ahead and make this project together. So let's go ahead and let me pull these supplies. Let me get everything off to the side so that you can better follow along with me and put that on this side. Okay, so many of you are familiar with Stampin' Up's trimmer. This is an amazing tool, and you're going to see why, especially as we work with this 12 by 12 piece of paper. It does have this extendable arm that has a little foot under it for extra support, so that's great, and we are going to need that whole arm. It is designed so that you can have both the scoring and the cutting pieces right in there. I like to mark my scoring with an S and my cutting with a C. Even though they're different colors, I'm just very visual and it's easier for me to see a letter than it is the colors. And then it is at 1 16th increments going across. Um, because I'm in the U.S., I have um, a imperial measurement or inches on mine. So we're going to start first with our 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And we're going to go ahead and cut it. So we're going to put this over here at the 11 and 3 quarters mark. The other nice thing about this is it does have this raised lip up here along this upper edge. That's that dark line that you see here. It's actually raised and your cardstock can bump up against it, helping you keep it nice and straight. In addition to the marks down here along the bottom. So now all we're going to do is we're just going to cut off that quarter of an inch. So now we have a piece that is four and a, um, 11 and 3 quarters. We're going to rotate it to the left, and we're going to cut it at four and a half inches. And while we still have ours this way, we're just going to go ahead and slide it over and cut another piece from the piece that's left at four and a half inches. This piece here is just scrap. You'll save it. You can use it for something wonderful in the future. Now this piece that we just cut, we want to make sure is at ten and three quarters. So there you go. Now what you have so far is you have one piece that is 11 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half and one that is 10 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half. So we'll set those down for just a second and then let's grab our 8 and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. And what we're going to do is you're going to cut this at 6 and 3 quarters. And what I found is by cutting it on the length side, the long side, that's going to allow me to get two cuts out so I can make two projects at least out of the eight and a half by eleven piece. So six and three quarters. And I did that wrong. I'm sorry. It's the other direction that you wanted at for two pieces. Ignore what I just said. Just totally pretend like I didn't even say that. And four and a half. These pieces again you can save for future great projects. So again, just as a refresher, so far what you have is eleven and three quarters by four and a half. 10 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half, 6 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the longest piece first, our 11 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half. And I like to start with the smallest score and just kind of feed my paper through from right to left. Some people like to turn theirs upside down and feed the other direction. For me, I like to go left to right. I think some of it's the way you were taught the first time, and I think sometimes it's also dependent on whether you are left or right-handed. I'm moving the cutting blade out of the way because all I'm going to do now is I'm going to score. And I'm just going to score once or twice back and forth starting at the one-inch mark. 
Now I'm going to slide this all the way over to the five and a half inch mark. And now here's where this extended arm, besides the large cuts that we did, is really coming in handy. Now I'm going to go to six and a half, and that's right in the groove right there, and there is a line showing you that. Six and a half. And then I'll go all the way to 11 inches. So just as a refresher so far, we've got ours at 11 and 3 quarters by 4 and a half, and we've scored it at 1 inch, 5 and a half, 6 and a half, and 11 inches. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it, and it doesn't matter because, you know, the sides are the same as far as, as long as it's the long side. You're going to go ahead and score just 1 inch. Now the nice thing about Stampin' Up's trimmer is there is an inch and a half on this side as well, and so I could, or an inch and a quarter, excuse me. So I could also score from this side over here on the right, my right. I'm not sure how it looks to you out there in video land. So, so again, you've got four score marks going across, and you've got an inch score mark along the bottom. One inch, five and a half, six and a half, eleven. We'll set that aside for just a second, and now we're going to grab our ten and three quarters piece of cardstock. And again, I like to start and move left to right, and so what we're going to do first is we're going to start here at six and a quarter inches, and we'll give that a score. We're going to go to eight and a quarter inches, and give that a score, and then we're going to go to ten and a quarter inches, and give it a score. So, six and a quarter, eight and a quarter, ten and a quarter. Then on our six and three quarters piece, we just simply want a half inch score mark. So we'll put that on the half inch mark and give that a little score. Now before I start doing anything else to that, while I still have my trimmer out, I'm going to go ahead and cut my designer series paper. That way I can simply put that away and have a nice clean workspace without having to haul my trimmer back and forth in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at the four and a quarter mark and we're going to be cutting. So let's pull that blade in like that. And then I'm going to go to three and a quarter. So four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then this leftover piece is the perfect size that you need. With this piece here, we're going to cut it at three and a quarter. This little piece here is just extra that you can use for something later. And now what I want to do is I want to cut that at three quarters. And there's enough to get one more piece of three quarters. Just like that. Okay. So you've got these pieces here to work with. Now we can go ahead and we can put our trimmer away. We're done working with that for today for this project. So now what we want to do is we want to start to burnish our score lines. And that's where that bone folder comes in handy. You just want to have a nice rub on all of those score lines. That always just helps your project go together. Oops. Sorry about that. I don't know what I just did there. Sometimes with the lighting that I have on here, and I'm trying to see what I'm doing. There we go. It created a little bit of a glare, and I couldn't see that, and I manhandled it. So, but it's all going to come together. It's all good. Give that a nice score. And then in here again on this one inch mark. So we've just kind of created some nice deep creases. We're going to take our snips and where all of those score lines are, we're going to cut right up just that one inch. We're going to make that one inch cut in just like that. Okay. So on this piece here, we've just made some deep creases and we've cut up to the one inch mark. Now let's go ahead and let's just do all the rest of our creases real quick and then we can start to use our adhesive to put it together. There's that piece. And <coughs> Excuse me guys, sorry about that. Okay, so we can set all of that again. So all I've done is made some nice deep creases. What I'm going to be working with is our tear and tape. I love to work with the tear and tape. It's quick and it's easy. And one thing that you want to make sure that you do is you don't want to skimp with your adhesive. You want this to stay together. 
Um, if you're giving it to somebody, you definitely don't want it falling apart. That's kind of embarrassing. And um, you also want the ability to add heavier things to it if you want to. Um, the one box that I showed you has all of those Starbucks items in it, and it is indeed very heavy. So what I've done is on one of the flaps, doesn't matter which side, I've added two pieces of tear and tape, one at the outer edge and one right up against the score line. And then on this fold here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a piece of tear and tape right in here, up close to the score line, and then right here along the edge. So, and then I just find it really just helps me do that. A little tip for you when you're working with anything that has little um, small pieces, little um, layers like that that you're peeling off all the time. If you keep a trash can really close and handy at your workplace, you'll find that you'll be able to keep your workplace a little nicer and cleaner. Not that those things sometimes don't, don't stick, but they do. And I do have a little trash can that hangs off of my work desk. So, okay. So, I have the one side of my box, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this over to the edge. I'm going to fold my two corners down. Oops. I'm going to fold my box in and I'm going to secure it, giving it a nice rub. So what I've done is I've created just that little open box that you're able now to put things inside of. We're going to set that aside and what I'm going to do is on the half inch score lines that both these two pieces have, that's where I'm putting my tear and tape, is right where that's at. We'll hang on to that, we need that yet one more time. Right, let's just go ahead and peel those pieces up. And one more, just like that. And so now what I want to do is this bottom piece of the six and three quarter that has no adhesive, I want to go ahead and line up on that half inch mark. And now I personally, if you notice where I put mine, mine's on the outside flap because I want to make sure that that's folded in. If you want to overlay it over the top, that's fine. I just like that line hidden. So we're just gonna line that up really nice. And now this little piece here, you just push in to make a W. So if you think my name, Janet Wakeland, so you've got your little W and that's your easel. We're going to go back to our box for just a second. And again, do not skimp on your adhesive, guys. It's one of the areas that you definitely like to invest in in your projects. So you just want to make sure. Oops. And I'm just putting three bands across. Okay, and if it hangs out over the edge, you fold it back to the inside. And we'll grab our paper piercer one last time. And let's pull that piece off. There we go. Another piece here. And here again, we're hanging off the edge. I'm just folding it back in. And then this piece is going to go on the front of that easel piece that you just made. So we're going to just kind of come in. And I'm just doing it sideways so that you can see what I'm doing. I found if I hold it like this and I push it in together, it goes together great. So now I've got that little box just like that. What you would want to do next is those designer pieces that you cut. The larger one goes on the front of your box. The next one just goes right here like that. And then the little strips that you cut are what goes on the side of your box over here, like so. And what you end up with is, again, like this one has some great Starbucks ideas. Wouldn't that be wonderful sitting on a desk? And then they'll just have their little coffee for whoever they need to take a break or something like that. So this one's got lots of coffee. This one uses the wishing you um, a season filled with warmth and cheer. It's a great, wonderful stamp set. I love the sentiments in it, warmth and cheer, and keep warm, snuggle up, be wrapped in love. So it's got that warm, cozy feel to it. 
And the designer series paper comes from our Warmth and Cheer designer stack, which has just a wonderful warm feel to it, plaids. Great colors for the holidays, but there's a lot of wonderful things. January, February are still some of our really cold months, so this would be great to have on hand when you're snuggling and you're doing a little memory keeping post holidays and things like that, or making some other gifts like this. So now let me show you some other variations and projects. This one is not finished yet, but it uses some more paper from the Warmth and Cheer set. And um, I've got a little bit of our burlap that I just pulled and gathered, and I'm going to be putting some holiday thank you notes in this one and giving it as a little gift for those um, that I know who need to do gifts um, or thank yous post-holidays. So that's great. But did I bring my goodies over with me? Oh, yeah, just to show you that, like your what we call our movie theater candies that are in those boxes, those sit nice in here. Your popcorn fits great in here, so your microwave popcorn fits in here, so you can put microwave popcorn in here with a gift card or something like that, so that's a fun idea. Now, the next one that I have for you is a sneak peek of some product coming in January, but it uses product that may or may not be retiring. We do not have the final list yet. We will have that the beginning of December, but this really sweet real red ribbon with this white trim is so, so perfect for Valentine's, so you're going to want to make sure that you have some of this in your crafting stash. But this is one of our new Valentine's stamp sets coming with coordinating framelits, and then I used our stitched framelits on the front of it. I did the same on here as well, used the stitched framelits. The product, the ribbon, as well as the baker's twine, the stamp sets of paper are all in our holiday catalog, so you're going to want to make sure that you take a look at that. And then one more idea, this is one that I actually made for my husband. The plaid is from the Warmth and Cheer paper again. Tiny little peek at a new stamp set and framelit coming with um, tools, and this just says nailed it. Um, what is in here are some cards for my husband to send to me. I thought this was something that he could put on his desk. And as a couple of different seasons, anniversary, thinking of you, um, I'm sorry, diff different things like that. And cute little phrase, nailed it, like, yes, I was thoughtful, I got it. And so this is just something fun that I'm doing for my husband um, because sending cards, even though it is my business, is not one of his strengths. So just something fun for him. So um, again, I will post these dimensions if you miss them on my blog at remarkablycreated.com. Make sure that you're taking a look at that holiday catalog and you're filling your craft stash with things that may no longer be retired come January 4th. And then make sure that you're on my mailing list to receive our new catalog so that you can be shopping for some of the sneak peek items that you saw here. Thanks for joining me today for today's project, guys. Take care and God bless.